This is by far one of the more stylish zoos I have visited. The weather was not great, as usual, and we were a bit limited on time, as usual. But despite the grey weather, everything looked very fresh and clean. Everything felt like a hybrid between natural materials and stylish artificial. As you can see, this relatively smaller zoo is located in a city and this city is well known for its art events and that's Basel in Switzerland. Netherlands we don't have a lot of zoos left with a specific aquarium section and if they do they are no longer the typical dark hallway as you see in many of the zoos I've been showing you lately. What I have noticed in comparison between the Dutch zoos is that in the German and Swiss zoos the selection of species is much more diverse. There seems to be always a mix of temperate water species tropical freshwater fish and of course salt water. I don't know if any of you notice the same difference but to me it's quite interesting. Let's move on to the terrarium section which was one of the better ones I have seen thus far. And this is because the setups were really spacious, of course very clean and well lit. The decoration was top notch and I have to say their usage of plant and the interesting plant species they used was really cool. Also their species selection was just very nice. Of course they had a few really rare species, but they also had a few species which are quite popular in the private sector, which you don't really see in zoos, but I think they fit here really well because they are actually day active and therefore great display species. To be honest, this time I did not look for the species selection that the zoo had, we just went there out of curiosity. And therefore, this section was the absolute highlight and the biggest surprise for me. In here they have hellbenders, the biggest salamander species of the Americas. Seeing this species was first for me and it's such a bummer that I don't have better images of these incredible salamanders. Everything was just a bit rushed but I still wanted to show them to you. And yeah for me, if you're ever close to the zoo, this species alone will be the reason for me to actually visit it. Now it is time for probably my favorite building of Basel Zoo. This building is a great example of the very sophisticated looking buildings and architecture combined with the natural elements. They had a pond, natural substrate and tropical plants but as you can see also a lot of artificial materials to make everything work. You could see it was all a bit new and fresh but I'm sure with time it will only look better. Hidden along the walls there are some fieres with species like the bayo in there, but many of the birds were free roaming. My absolute favorite was this incredible looking blauwkroontje as we call it in Dutch. And the list of animals was not directly from a specific area, but the selection itself was very nice and all the birds looked really healthy. If you want to get a different view of this interesting building, you can also go up on several levels and this way you can see all the animals from different angles 
and yeah also get a better glimpse of this interesting building in a different part of the building you can really see the art element of this zoo like these matte glass panels which i think were used to reflect light through the building either way it looks really cool although i do wonder how they are kept clean as there were also some free birds roaming in here and i'm sure they will sit on the panels and actually pull on them Walking out and looking at the big other enclosure, which is situated about in the middle of the zoo, everything seemed just so new. It was natural-esque, but also very artificial. And the same struck us in the A building. A building which almost every zoo seems to have, and the buildings which I often enter with most mixed feelings. In the building it looks similar to most ape and monkey buildings, mostly concrete, also in theme with the zoo, and bare floors for easy cleaning. All the animals did have access to outdoor enclosures, which looked very nice, but everybody stayed indoor due to the bad weather. Everything certainly was clean and looked well kept and in these buildings I always try to stay as objective as possible and look at the animals and their behavior. I did not see any direct signs of stress, all the animals looked healthy. But I am most certainly not well versed a monkey on apes so maybe I'm not the right person to assess this. As you can see, there are many natural-like structures, but again, a lot of them, at least the main structures, were actually all artificial. This is probably for hygiene purposes, but it was something that felt in theme with the zoo. What I did like were these climbing handles along the walls for the Borneo orangutans because it was just another way for the animals to yeah, utilize their setup a bit more. Now it is time for the last two interesting buildings. This image is one of my favorites because I think it just gives a great example of the feel of many parts of the zoo and how it overall looks like. There's almost a brutalist usage of concrete with natural materials and even the natural materials as you can see with the placement of these rocks and the back wall are used in such a manner that it looks oddly artificial but also aesthetically appealing.
glass building held this termite mount. Which was very cool as most zoos will have some ants, but not termites. And as you can see they had a very nice big exhibit, completely in the style of the zoo. And then it is time to take a look at the last big exhibit of the zoo, where again the theme of the zoo is repeated. If you look closely on the termite mount, there is the dwarf mongoose. This social animal seemed to have the exhibit all to itself, but as you might have noticed there is a lot of water. And in this water there is actually a Nile crocodile. Certainly an interesting cohabitation and the staff must have been very certain about the athleticism of the mongoose. After this it was time for us to leave, passing the nursery for small rare African tortoise species. I really enjoyed the zoo and I wish I had more time and a stable hand to get a real good glimpse of what the zoo could offer.